was there eight teams that were undefeated? Yeah, they were. Teams? Yeah. Now, now, Penn State lost. Who else lost that was undefeated? Did some other undefeated team lose to? Alabama. Alabama, yeah. Okay, so those two are now out of it. So, um, yeah, I just I, – I, you know, in a, in a cool way, I'm happy because now Minnesota is the they're, – they're leading the other division in the Big Ten, which means if they play it out, mm-hmm. if they win out, they'll be in the Big Ten championship game. And, I, I mean, it'll be either mm-hmm. Ohio State or Michigan or whoever on that side of the bracket. Um, was there anything else, yep. Bud, that jumped out at you for college football on Saturday? Anything else that – any upsets, anything mm. like that? Minnesota game that surprised you? Well, you had Minnesota winning that game anyway. So, was there anything else that? Yeah, I had Minnesota. Not really. I I had I had LSU winning. I had Minnesota winning. Um, I I just think that you know, you know, I just watch so much college football that it's really easy to predict. I feel that it's easier to protect these games than the NFL. Right. Right. Um. Uh, I had Illinois winning. I had Illinois beating Michigan State. Mm-hmm. You know that one. That one minute, I was like, I was looking at that game, and I was looking at Michigan State, and I was looking at Illinois, and I was like, I don't understand how they're a two and a half touchdown dog. Illinois is not that bad. Michigan State's not that good. That's the other game that jumped out at me. Um, the one that I was disappointed. Uh, I was thought Iowa State could give Oklahoma a bit of a battle. Um, yeah. Well, I was gonna say, uh, staying TCU, in. TCU, I had, I was. You got TCU winning. Go ahead. Well, I, was I say, did, stay. and they almost did. I had them. Yeah, beating Baylor. Oh, yeah, they were so close, so close. Because I had them winning. I had them. I had them. I had taken them as an upset to upset um, Baylor at twelve. So that's that's. I was like, I was because I I liked what they did against Texas. Uh, I thought that they were a really tough team. And uh, they showed it. They showed that they could be and they could play with the big boys. They beat Texas. They're on the comeback in a couple of years, and they'll be back to where they were. Well, the the one team, Bud, that I thought, speaking of Texas, I thought Kansas State was going to beat the Longhorns, and that just didn't happen. So that was kind of, I think, one Mm. of the ones. Yeah, I think I I had Kansas State winning. I'd I'd have to go look at my – I'd have to go take a look, but I think I had Kansas State winning, and that was – that didn't happen clearly. No, yeah, no, that was that was an interesting uh, interesting loss. Yeah, and, uh, but it was good. It was good to see SMU get back on the winning path. The Pony Express only has one loss, and they're back on track again. So yeah, down down here. That was a eight. nail biter. I had. <laughs> so. I had them. I had them winning and winning handily against East Carolina, and they they were like they had me sweating bullets, you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I got to see ECU. Uh, they played the Bulls on the road, and that was a game that USF handily won, um, you know, two weeks right, ago. Right, right. And, you know, that's another disappointing thing about USF is we have two weeks to prepare for Temple, and yet you come out and you lay an egg. And like I said, I'm going to go into more of that tonight on my Tampa Talk show. But the, the, the thing is, you know, ECU is not really that bad. Of, they're, they're like you said too with with uh, with TCU. They're give them another year or two. That team will be on the rise too in the AAC. I, I have a funny feeling. Eastern Carolina's back to where they were mm. when Holt was their coach before he came here and destroyed USF's program for many years. But um, yeah, it's a mm. whole different story as it as it was. But yeah, I didn't. That's see a whole nother can of worms, isn't it? Yeah. I don't see anything else, but other than that surprise with that, I mean, I will be shocked if they come out with the rankings and they say that, you know, Ohio State's number one. I, I, that will will shock me to the to the. Now they can still be number yeah, two. Yeah, all the preliminary. But all the preliminary right? stuff I saw was had them at 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 uh, had LSU one. So okay, it's such yeah. a toss up. I don't know. He I, I saw LSU at one. Ohio State at two, Alabama at three, and then I don't even pick one. Pick one, AJ. Clemson, Georgia. I don't know who you want at four. That's probably Clemson. You got Clemson, Clemson, Clemson at four? Yeah, probably. I actually, to be honest with you, I would do I would do like this. I would put LSU, Ohio State, Clemson at three, 
and Alabama at four, or even Georgia at four, because Alabama lost. So, okay, you lose. And again, this is not the time of the year to lose a college football game, as we both know. You don't lose this late in the season. But again, here's the argument but- that everyone out there is going to say when it comes down to it. If two SEC teams make it to the Final Four, the committee has it that way. Why is it that way? Why is it that it's not two Big Ten teams? Why is it not two ACC teams? That The argument continues mm-hmm. because I get to hear it every year from Ohio State fans in particular. We know how much we both don't like them anyway. But to make the long story short, yeah, really. to make the long story short, the reason – I think, and again, I could be biased because I live in the South and I've watched SEC football all my life. I think it's the best conference in college football. I don't think it's going to be. It's been on a downward spiral because Alabama's been the only team that's come out of the conference to do anything. But Georgia's on the rise. LSU's on the rise. The Gators are are not too far away from being back in it. And the Big Ten's getting better, too, because Michigan's there. Ohio State, you know, you have Minnesota, just Penn State. Auburn. Those too as well. So you know, I I think I I think that the Big Ten and the SEC are neck and neck. The top six teams in both leagues right, are right. are the best six teams in the country, and right. that and then the bottom six are the six wor- are the six worst teams in the country in both leagues. You know, you yeah. got Old Miss and Maryland vying for for you know Kings of the Turd Bowl. Yeah. No, I would agree with that. And you I, know, I just think Vanderbilt's, Vanderbilt's I think, I think that, yeah, Vanderbilt's right there on in 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 line with um with uh Rutgers for for garbage, and then you got the middle teams. You know, you got your um Ken, Kentucky and and uh, Purdue are pretty equal. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that you could put Mississippi I think that, there. You know, that equation too. If you want to throw yep. them in. Yep. I think I think both conferences are very equal. I'd love to see a matchup of you know I, I Alabama and Oklahoma and Ohio State would could be a fun one. Alabama and LSU could be a good one. Um, well, you well, know, Michigan of, and uh, Auburn would be a, would be well, a good game. I was just gonna say, speaking of Georgia, they have to play the Tigers this week. Auburn Tigers. That should be a good football oh, game. Oh, okay. Game. So Georgia's not one. out of out of the, the woodwork here yet. They have one loss. They lost to South yeah. Carolina. So and the Gators have two mm-hmm. losses. But that the, the the foot part of it is we lost to Georgia. So we have to have the Bulldogs lose three games for us to get to the SEC title game. Mm-hmm. That's the way it has to go now because mm-hmm. they don't. Mm-hmm. Um, but they could lose to you know Georgia could lose to Auburn this week. I mean Bo Nix. Mm-hmm. There's a that's on the rise too. Auburn's not a bad mm-hmm. team in the SEC West. So you nope. have LSU, Alabama, Auburn like your top three there. You have Florida, mm-hmm. Georgia, and I would say probably Kentucky would be the third one. I, Tennessee possibly. I don't know there. Tennessee. Tennessee is very much in rebuilding. Yeah, they're in rebuild, and, and and they've got Jeremy Pruitt's got his hands full. You know, I hope mm-hmm. for. Tennessee fans out there, give Jeremy a chance because he did so well, mm-hmm. you know, where he was at as a coordinator. Give him a chance to build that program back up. Um, but, get you know, give him a chance to do it, not fire him and say, okay, we got to start all over again. Because that's not helping the matter and, with – No, it's not. And, and that's that's where I'm at at Michigan too. You know, okay. and I, I know we've talked a lot about, about the coaching – the coaching uh, – issues at Michigan um, over the last decade, whether it was Rick Rod or Brady Hoke or now Jim Harbaugh. And now, I, you know, I moved out of Michigan. I moved to Tennessee chasing a woman. You know how that goes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've been here for about a year. And, you know, I, I've you know, kind of get, gotten into the, the Tennessee sports. And, you know, I don't have anything against Tennessee sports as long as they're not playing a Michigan team. Right. And hearing the Tennessee fans talk, it's like, you know, Last year, a year and a year ago, Butch Jones went eight and four, and that was unacceptable. So he was fired. And then they brought in the new guy last year or, or this year. I'm not exactly sure how it breaks down. And this guy loses to Georgia State in the first game, and right. and, and they look bad. 
they looked bad in in Georgia against Georgia State, and you know, and then you know, and now now Tennessee fans are wanting new guy gone. Well, how can you build a program if you're just going to constantly fire a guy? It's like you know, Lions fans are all ready to move ready to move on from Matt Patricia. Two years ago, they wanted they wanted Jim Caldwell gone because he was nine and seven. They bring in Matt Patricia. You get what you want, this constant rotation, this constant coaching carousel where it's, you know, wheel of coaching, turn, 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 tell us the lesson we should learn, giving a guy a year and a half, can't turn a program around? Who knew? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it, it, it's it, well, as you know, too, bud, you can't please everybody. You know, you, you can't. Mm. You know, you, you have. But it's embarrassing. You know, it, oh, I agree with you. I, I totally agree with you. You know, you know you it's an, it's an, as an educated fan, it's embarrassing to watch these people. They post on Facebook or they post on their, you know, social media, whatever your social media du jour is, and and they just have the stupidest hot takes that that that, that you know. And I know I'm 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 guilty of some of the the more you know egregious hot takes. I'm I'm not afraid to admit that sometimes I can let my bias get the best of me, and I can say right. some kind of questionable things, but. You know, it's like a guy posts. You can't fire a guy after a year and a half. You know, especially when his best player is out, when his when his coat when his when his when ownership won't do anything to make the team better. And then you know, you know, and, and you bring in a guy that that just you know that has never had head coaching experience. Whether it was you know, you bring in a guy with no GM experience, and that blows up in your face. So what do we do? Well we, well, we had this guy with no GM experience. Let's hire a head. Let's, let's bring in a head coach. Let's hire this guy that's never even done a coordinator because he was right. a Marine and he'll bring discipline. And it's a disaster. And the first team to go 0 and 16, the worst team since the uh, since the 76 Bucks, who were an expansion team. You know. Yeah. I understand. I, and the yeah. fans. That, that fan is fanatic and fanatics are irrational, but you've got to realize that that the, the you can't the first you have to build the factory before the first can of soup can come off the assembly line. Correct, correct. Well, I mean, I never really understood what I the lines why why they let Jim Caldwell go. I never. Uh, I didn't get it. A be- because they listen to the they listen to the media in Detroit talk. Because that's what the talking point was. Well, Jim Caldwell can't get it done. Let's go get somebody else. You know, let's go find you know Jim Caldwell. He's been nine and seven the last two years. We missed the playoffs the last two years. You know, and again, it was the same trap that they fell in with Matt Millen. You know, and then they they go out and they get Matt Patricia, a, a guy a guy who had just bombed the season away in New England. New New England is terrible. Their defense is is, is god awful. They they give up some forty points to the Eagles in the Super Bowl. Yeah, let's hire that guy. He's a genius. Well, they and the, you know they they have to give give Matt Patricia a chance. I mean, again, you know, the Lions. You know, you you got Matt Stafford, who I think is a solid quarterback. Um, I wouldn't say I he's up with the elite. I, I, he's in no. the middle no. middle pack of quarterbacks, um, but he's a good he's good enough to win. And I mean that they've shown that this year when they won. Uh, you know they're good. He's good enough to win down the stretch. Um, they just don't have good, but not great. They don't have the pieces quite in place yet to be a good team. Not yet. Now right. you fire a head coach, and guess what? Now you mm-hmm. started from scratch again because now. Mm-hmm. Let's say, okay, he gets, you know, he fires Jim Bakuter, who's the offensive coordinator. Well, let's get rid of him. Well, no, if you get rid of him, you might ruin Matthew Stafford because that's who he's had for most no, of his career. So, and, and Matthew Stafford's had four four coordinators, three head coaches. Yeah. It's been a constant rotation. And yep. and okay, so let's say we let's say we fire Jim Bob Cooter and we bring in um a a new coordinator um. And I, I, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of a name, you know, that, that we can bring in. You know, let's say they bring in a college guy. Let's say they go and get um, uh, the head coach. Um, oh, uh, I can see his stupid face from Oklahoma. 
Oh, uh, you're talking about uh, Lincoln Riley. Lincoln, Lincoln Riley. Riley. 